This whole journey into bookbinding and journaling started when I was really little. I used to make little books like my boys do. And then I found a book in Italy that I really liked and I used it for a little while and it fell apart really quickly and it was not cheap. When that came apart, I was able to see how the book was bound, how it was put together. I made a book out of some scrap leather and paper that I had and I went to Amsterdam and my bag was stolen on the first day. And as not an extremely social person, my comfort was always in having a journal and having a place to kind of hide my head. And so when my journal was stolen on the very first day within hours of my arrival, it became my mission to find bookbinding supplies. I spent the entire day walking and asking people about the bookbindery. And I can't remember the name of the place, maybe it's written in my journal. It was a wonderful little, I think it was in the basement, I had never seen anything like it before. So they had all kinds of thread and linen and everything having to do with bookbinding. And it was this magical, life-changing moment. So it really kind of transformed into, I think, making my life what it is. It all started with a theft. So when I actually started finding my journals, this was the first book that I got. I flipped through it a lot and it led me to understand that anything is possible. There's different ways to stitch and there's the incorporation of metal and closures and tooled leather, just really kind of endless things that you could do with the book. There's no right or wrong. So just having this book really opened the world of possibilities to me. So I started making really absurd books, really big, really not well constructed. They came apart, headbands bent down. This is just the part of the process and a fun way to see what goes into the learning of anything. So I use brass tacks. I did patchwork. After the fact, I put this mull on this book, but I didn't do it originally, so it split here. And a lot of this stuff is gonna happen regardless because this is a really big book and I carried it around with me everywhere and I sat on it and I used it as a pillow. I dropped it and I traveled with this for a year, maybe a half a year. It took abuse and I got to practice. We've been getting a lot of questions about the materials that we use for our bookbinding after sharing the tutorials. And I wanted to show you exactly what we use, but I also would like to let you know that we arrived at these choices through trial and error and personal preference. So these are by no means the only materials that you can use, but they're definitely tried and true in our hands. A variety of these come from Talis in New York. We've also tried some supplies from Shepherds in London all of these shops have different types of thread and different weights. We get ours from Talis because it's in New York and we're in Philadelphia and it just makes a lot of sense. Visiting the shops is a great way to touch and feel everything and to really understand the thickness. A number online is kind of meaningless to me. So I arrived at these choices by going to the shops and handling the materials. Our thread choice is this Coats and Barber. It's 18 over three. So it's a really nice thickness. It's not really sticky and it also doesn't fray really easily. This is definitely my favorite thread and you can get in a variety of colors. Another option, which a lot of people do, this does not suit me at all, but I use wax to coat regular thread. So thread can fray, which can make it tear or not really easily. And if you use this wax, it can help guide and strengthen your thread as you sew your book. I find that it makes it really sticky and it's not something I love, but it's an option. I have it here, so I figured I'd show you. These are the needles that we use. They're from C.S. Osborne. It's a super old company. I find a lot of their tools at flea markets. It's two and three eighths inch length. Gauge is 19. You can take all the information from this package. It's got a nice big eye, which makes it easy to thread. And so you can stitch with a variety of threads and it's got a round tip. So you're not piercing your page inadvertently. You're already sawing or poking the holes, so you're just using this needle to carry the thread through. These are tapes. We use linen tape for our books. So if you're not putting a cover on your book, it's really nice to use whatever materials you can that will be exposed to create the personality of the book that you're making. So Traditionally, we use linens. It's called linen tape, it's not sticky. It's just a textile, and this is what reinforces the spine, and this is what we stitch around. It comes in a variety of widths, and also a bunch of different styles, like with a looser weave or a tighter weave. This is 3 eighths of an inch that we use, and it comes in a big spool. They cut it to size. This is the headband material. This comes from Talis. They offer a sample book that comes with a variety of colors and materials. So if you order the sample book, it's a really nice way to touch and feel the varieties that they have to offer. We also have a tutorial that shows you how to make your own headband. 
So there's so much flexibility within making a book. I'm showing you what we've chosen to be the Peganol preferences. This is the mole. This is from Line Co. And this gives your spine a lot of extra strength. Another product that we use from Line Co. is this neutral pH adhesive. It's clear and it's flexible and it's great for bookbinding. I actually use this for everything. I use it when I add things into my journal. I use it all the time. Cover options are endless. When I first started making journals, I used a lot of antique leather that I would find at flea markets that were other things. For example, this was a camera case. This is the brass part, the closure. I believe this was a vintage jacket that I used for the spine, which I did often. This was from Chaps. And this I found in Amsterdam. It was an old chair in the 1800s that had been reupholstered. This is a journal that I made for Walter. I lined it with this antique textile and he carried this around with him in his pants pocket when he was in Iraq. It got sweaty and dry and all kinds of weird, but a charming piece of history changed nonetheless. Here are some of my old favorite journals made from a variety of antique materials. Making journals for Peg and All required us to find something more consistent that we could use on a regular basis and also something that was sustainable and something that we felt happy to work with in the shop. Our standard leather involved an adventure as usual. First, we went to an old tannery in England that was 500 years old and it was amazing. It really kind of opened our eyes to the world of leather making and how the processing can be done in a way that doesn't negatively impact the environment. We ended up coming back to Pennsylvania and we found one of the, one of the few tanneries um, in America that do veg tanning is uh, like an hour and a half from where we now live. So they make this really beautiful leather. This is a newer journal, so you can see how it starts out. It really gathers a lovely patina as you use your, your book or your bag or whatever it is. So we've really enjoyed working with this leather. We're really pleased with the results. This is Silas's journal. It's pretty well loved. He's, he used this for a while. And then here's our black leather. So we have two colors that we use of the vegetarian leather, brown and the black primarily and it also engraves really nicely so we put this in the back and it's great for customizing so if you want to put a quote or choose one of our quotes or put a name or a date or anything this leather really takes the laser well we use strathmore drawing paper and we use the 80 pound paper all of our book sizes are determined by uh, the paper size that we get because for the most part, we don't wanna waste paper. So we fold it in half and fold it in half until we find the size that we like. Of course, this is just our choice. This is what we have landed on. We like it for the weight. We like it for the color. It's got like a nice soft warmth to it. We like it for the variety of art supplies that we can use on it, including inks and watercolor and pencil and pastel. It's not ideal for everyone, but it's really a nice compromise for a mixed media journal or sketchbook. I hope that this little walkthrough of the materials that we've used and kind of how we've come to choose the materials that we use really leads you to understand a little more of the process of not just book binding, but kind of sourcing and discovering your voice in the bookbinding world.